teaching kids how to play Dungeons and Dragons, figurines are really important, I found out. So I've been teaching kids uh, like nine year olds, 11 year olds. Now I'm teaching like, yeah, so I'm teaching like middle school right now. And I have to tell you what happened on my last adventure. So these kids, we finally got down to business and I set them up uh, with, uh, you know, basically like a game mat and some you know, dry erase markers, and we were. Gonna, I was going to draw a dungeon, and I was going to have them run it. There were eight kids running this table, and so I knew combat was going to be hard. So I was trying to give them a social situation to start, give them a monster they could talk to. So I gave them a dragon, right, a red dragon. Well, I, I actually, I told them to pick figurines, right? So I had this whole pile of figurines. Well, one of them, like, pulls out this dragon figurine that just happened to be in there, right? And so this... They looked at this dragon, dragon and they're like, yeah, it's a dragon. They're like, yeah, that's great. And they're like, no, it's a dragon with scoliosis. And I'm like, first of all, how do you know what that is? And number two, like, so, I mean, what an imagination these kids have. So basically what I did was we fought this red dragon and everybody's like, well, we're only level one characters. How are we going to do this? And one of them was smart enough to say, well, maybe it's a young red dragon. And I said, great. So we did that even though that was still like 178 hit points. But uh, anyway, uh, I fudged it. So they there's eight of them, by the way, too. So they could have talked to it because dragons are intelligent, right? And I thought, well, maybe they'll get the hint. And the dragons started talking to them. That's how I introduced the scenario. But no, they immediately started attacking it. So, because they're, you know, boys. And, uh, and, and so we did like a couple rounds of combat, I think three rounds of combat. And they're cutting its wings off and other body parts and uh <laughs> you know they're kids so they're like talking about the and then the tail right and so um i'm making them but here's the thing i'm making them describe what happens so every time they roll and they hit or even if they miss i i, I told them to describe how it happens so if you miss, you shoot an arrow and miss, tell me why, tell me where it went, tell me. And so like the one guy rolled a, a um, critical, you know, he failed, he rolled a one. And so he talks about how he tripped, you know, and like the arrow goes shooting into the ground. And then uh, another guy like uh, hits with his javelin. And he talks about it, you know, only doing one uh, point of damage. And so it... He, it bounces off one of his scales on his stomach. And, you know, anyway, the kids are really starting to get into the descriptions. And that's what I'm going for here because I'm not teaching them math. I mean, yeah, there's math involved. There's rolling of dice, that kind of stuff. But the difference between Dungeons and Dragons and a tabletop board game, a board game, you roll the dice, you follow the rules, and you do all that kind of stuff. The difference with Dungeons and Dragons is you're telling a story, right? So you're using the rules to tell a story, not the other way around. At least this is the way I think about it. So if you differ on me, this is fine and put it in the comments. We can talk about it. But my point here is I'm trying to teach these kids how to use their imagination in a creative way, how to do cooperative uh, strategies so that they can they all realize they're on the same side. and They're trying to obtain a goal, a collective goal and not hurt each other. And uh, and also, like, use their creativity in trying to find solutions for problems. Now, their solution on this one was just attack. But um, at that age, it kind of makes sense. But I will rig some more scenarios where combat is not going to be effective. In fact, it may be actively punished or just forbidden. And then they will have to find other things to do, like solve puzzles or uh, do social interactions in order to obtain their objective. But I just wanted to record this for those who may be in the position I am where I'm teaching uh, fairly young kids how to do things. Their visual imagination at that age is very big. So while you can do theater of the mind kind of stuff, I think having something tactile like this really helped in this case. Smash like if this were helpful for you at all. If you have questions or comments, put them down there. I usually answer comments, almost always, unless there's obscenity or if they're just impertinent. And then uh, also, if you want to see more like this, tell me. And smash uh, the subscribe button so you'll see more. Take care. Have a great day.